Okay, we're back on the Delco light plant here. And uh, as you saw in a previous video, it was stuck. So what we've done is taken the cylinder off and it, it was completely stuck down close to the bottom, which was the good news in that the uh, sweet spot hopefully is not disturbed. Crank throw is looking good. Uh, we've got cylinder over here on the bench and I've been soaking it with a hundred pounds of air pressure for two weeks and uh, never really got anything to move never really got any um, fluid to come out the bottom so we ended up taking it apart we put a hydraulic pump on it filled the cylinder full of oil and uh, Jim go ahead and, and pump our situation here and we can watch this piston come out here she comes Just got a, a hand pump here off of an old jack, and uh, we've got it uh, plumbed up. And working the cylinder out, piston out. So, so want you guys to see that it's going to get messy here. So I'm going to turn off the uh, video, but we'll be back when we have more progress. Okay, we've got the piston out. And we've got uh, everything cleaned up here. Got the piston laying here. Got the cylinder here. I've got the valves out of it. And uh, I've I've found very little on the web uh, as far as information on these Delcos go, um, and especially disassembled views and um, explanations of things. So I'm going to add a little bit of that to this video now. Uh, we've got three sixteenths rings on the piston, and uh, we got them loose and uh, freed up. They were totally stuck. I had to actually heat this with a propane torch and get things loose enough, warm enough to loosen. And uh, it's got an oil control ring down here on the bottom of the piston. So uh, that's a kind of a general overview of the piston. We've got shims, uh, the rod bearings in good shape and um, generally uh, looking pretty good here cleaned up very well an interesting feature of this particular engine is the copper uh, heat sink material here that's been uh, added to the cylinder now as I mentioned before the airflow flows down through the top here through the fins and out the bottom and then and then out the fan and uh, one thing that uh, there actually there's several things on this engine that are very interesting for the time period uh, a lot of features here that are used in modern engines modern engine technology of uh, the uh, the early 80s and up through actually up through today some of this stuff uh, one of those things is what I would call an automatic choke or uh, also a combination of an automatic choke and early fuel evaporation EFE which was used a lot in the 80s in automobile technology and what we've got here is is right here this is a actually a bimetallic strip and we pick heat off the head here this is the exhaust valve guide this is the exhaust valve port so this is a naturally hot area of the engine so we pick heat off of this area and the uh, the intake tube the air intake tube actually goes in here I'll show you that here in a second and this bimetallic strip depending on temperature as it heats up it will it will move over and open a port here 
and let the cold air come in um, through the top of the uh, the engine through the air intake opening and uh, when it's colder it'll it'll close off like that and this tube which sticks in here and comes over to the uh, carburetor um, carries the fresh air intake and I've got of course I've got the engine partially disassembled I didn't want to disconnect these wires yet so I've kind of just laid this solenoid assembly uh, on top of the fuel pump here and it, and uh, you know just to kind of not stretch the wires I've also got it wired up here so I don't stress the wires or the connectors here so I really don't want to disturb any of this yet till I get the engine running and see electrically what what it's, what it's like but anyway laying atop the uh, the actual AC fuel pump uh, let me diverse for a second here and I will show you an early AC logo there it is right there um, that's actually a fuel pump and of course AC was a, a subsidiary of General Motors still is in numerous ways also stands for Albert Champion and uh, of spark plug fame but anyway getting back to the topic here this is a solenoid and this is where the other end of the air intake tube goes goes in here and then, and then the, this end comes back over to the cylinder head we'll see this again after I get it uh, reassembled but at any rate this these wires come down here and this is a winding inside here and this is a solenoid and depending on engine temperature cranking uh, you know uh, starting things like that this solenoid will pull this flap closed like this and allow it to either bring air in from here there's little holes under here several of them and uh, it'll let it bring air in here or it'll close and let it bring the air in through the heated chamber here of the head so it can use heated air to help it run and the reason for that is this is kind of what I would call a glow plug but it's actually a, looks like an intake heater and if you look up in here um, I don't know if I can get the light in there or not but there is actually from this electric connector here crossed inside here I believe that to be an air intake heater or possibly a vaporizer because that's actually after the fuel is mixed and uh, this flange right here we're looking at right here actually bolts to the cylinder head so this would be a vaporizer a heater type situation there that would actually help vaporize the fuel and uh, the reason for that is this unit will actually run on kerosene so it needs to have high compression and in cold weather you know of course uh, some heat so I think that's the reason for the uh, the tube the EFE type situation here and uh, Hey, you know, this is 1930s. These guys had already figured this stuff out. Pretty amazing stuff. Okay, looking further here, let's look down in the crankcase here a minute. Here are the, the tappets. And, uh, of course, if I get uh, the light correct here, I can rotate the engine and see those moving. Those actuate the valves push rods go down in there. Um, it has uh, bolted on crank weights, uh, counterweights. There's a bolt head there for one of the counterweights. And uh, there it's showing on the crankshaft. 
And the gear you see there is the camshaft. It's uh, 90 degrees to the crank. Run with uh, some uh, angle bearing or uh, gears there. And actually, the, the cam lobes are there. You can actually see those turning too. Sorry for trying to hold the light and the camera and turn the engine at the same time. But anyway, just kind of give you a view down in this crankcase. I don't intend to have to go very much deeper into this engine. It's pretty clean inside. I'm going to change the oil. There's some oil left in it. Uh, speaking of oil, it has a it has a uh, an oil level indicator here, which is pretty cool. Um, it looks like maybe a pointer down here. Let me see if I can rub the grease off of it there. And a full mark there. And an empty mark there. And this is apparently a float inside there. Similar to what I've got on a De Laval engine over here. I think I showed you the points in here. But I just wanted to show you some of the internals that I can see from here. Um, give you some idea how these things are built. This thing's built like a freaking tank. And it's heavy. It's uh, extremely heavy. It, <laughs> it's not very big. But it's, uh, it's just built like a tank. And, uh, so anyway, I wanted to give you some overview of it. Let's look inside the cylinder here. Okay, here's a view inside the cylinder from this end, and it's uh, got a bore of 2 and 7 sixteenths. I don't know what the stroke is yet. But fortunately, as I explained before, the piston was uh, stuck at the bottom of the stroke. So that preserved the sweet spot up to the top where we really need to make compression and can't afford to lose any. Uh, up there at the top is uh, it's got a little bit of surface rust there. I have cleaned it up a little bit. I think it'll be just fine. I don't intend to run it on kerosene. I'm going to run it on gasoline. So if we lose a little compression here and there, that'll be fine. No big deal. But uh, anyway, uh, for the shape it's in, it's pretty good. Uh, here's, uh, here's a little intake valve here. Husky looking little thing. And... Uh, it's about 13 sixteenths in diameter and uh, just a typical valve pretty good shape, it's got a little groove on it there, it'll lap just fine the exhaust valve however has got a it's got a pit in it right here right where it seats so I'm gonna have to grind it I'll grind it and lap it in and uh, it'll be fine I'll look the seats over a little closer too, but uh, at any rate, uh, here's uh, a view of the of the cylinder. So uh, I think that's about it. I'll do a little valve work here, put it back together, and put it back on, see if I can get it running.